The world is vastly changing as the fourth industrial revolution is sweeping the planet. And as black Americans, we have to ask ourselves, what is our place in this new world? According to the data, our future looks bleak. But a shift in our mentality can change things around. And it starts with a few very simple questions. Are we producers or consumers? Will we be the drivers of this new technology or simply the users? Make no mistake, the world is changing. And whether that change is for better or worse depends on you and not somebody else. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to my bi-weekly show, Brother Please Hear Me Out, where I take time from our usual political discussions to focus on the fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence, automation, and the effects it'll have on the black community. I also discuss what we can do to minimize the negative effects of AI and automation as well. So make sure you share this video with your loved ones, family, and friends. And don't forget to show your support to the channel as well. You can do so via Cash App at dollar sign TD Hip Hop or through joining Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Your financial contributions are deeply appreciated and it helps to expand this critical message to the masses who otherwise will be left in the dark. The links to both Patreon and Cash App will be pinned in the comment section below as well as in the description of this video. Now, on today's episode, what I want to do is continue on with our discussion about positioning our children for success in the digital age. Now, last episode, I spoke on an institution called Code Ninjas, which is where I send my son to learn how to code, but it is a bit pricey to go there. So what I wanted to do is introduce you all to some free online tools and institutions that we can take advantage of in order to position our children for success accordingly. Now, what I want to do today is re-upload an old episode of Brother Please Hear Me Out that originally aired earlier this year, I want to say January 9th to be exact, and the title of that episode was called Free Tools for Black Children to Survive the New Economy, and the first half of that video will be dealing with a free online program for children between the ages of 5 and 13, and the second half of the video will deal with a free online institution for high schoolers. So now before we get into the video, for those of you who watch this all the way through, please make sure if you're aware of any other free tools or free online tools and institutions that we can use, list them in the comment section below. Um, obviously, everything is not going to be covered in this one video, but like I said, for those of you who are aware of other online programs, list them in the comment section, but don't post the link because if you post the link, it may not show up in the comment thread. So just say the name of the institution or the name of the uh, online program. That's free to use or little to no cost. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and dive straight into this video. So I, what I wanna do real quick, I wanna recommend this website to you. It's very useful and very handy. It's called willrobotstakemyjob.com. So let me, give me just a second so I can pull that up for you. And I suggest that you frequent this website, you know, at least once a year, you know, just so you can see what updates that there are on this site. So you can stay on top of whether or not you should be you should be putting yourself in position to get your tech skills up to par so that you don't get left behind in the transition that's happening within this world. So let me make that bigger for you. OK, will robots take my job dot com. You see, a lot of people like to argue with me about whether or not they're going to be replaced by artificial intelligence and automation. A lot of people think I'm just talking a bunch of sci fi garbage and conspiracy theory nonsense. But, you know, I'm not going to argue with people about this stuff. I'll just leave it up to you and good luck. So I'll type in security guards because we tend to work these jobs a lot. Right. So security guards. Here we go. Security guards. Eighty four percent is eighty four percent chance that your security guard job will be replaced by AI and robots. Now, when you scroll down a little bit more and you come here, it states that it's highly likely this occupation will be replaced by robots and AI. However, workers may be able to take some comfort in the results from our poll, which shows 59%, which shows a 59% chance of automation within the next two decades. Now, don't pay any attention to that on the bottom if you want to do that because you would just like to believe that your job isn't going to be replaced by automation. That's on you. But where they're getting that poll from is simply by polling the people who actually work these jobs. As you can see over here, when you come down to the bottom, 
excuse me, it says, how likely do you think this occupation will be taken over by robots and AI within the next 20 years? So basically what you have is security guards that are saying uh, no chance or small chance because they're in denial of the fact that this is actually happening and that they're going to be out of work very soon in the near future. You understand what I'm saying? So pay that paragraph at the bottom, no mind. Only thing you need to focus on is the big number right here. And for all my security guards out there, my brothers and sisters doing that, um, let's please take this seriously and let's get our tech skills up to par, okay? So now that does it for this portion of the conversation concerning this website. Let me pull this off of the screen. Give me just a moment. And what I want to do now is move into this article right here. Let me share the screen for this. Okay. Now I want to move into this article here, right? I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description below. And every article and website that I go to, the links will be in the description below so that you can view this stuff for yourself. Now, I'm not going to read this article uh, in its entirety. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to read it at all. I'm going to leave that up to you to do your own due diligence. But what's being discussed in this article that's titled, Kids Take to Coding at an Early Age in China, Making it Child's Play. When you're reading this article, what you're seeing is that over in China, they have children as young as three years old, you know, learning how to code. They have eight-year-olds, as you can see right here, that are teaching other children how to code. You have 10-year-olds. Uh, where is that 10-year-old child at? Uh, here it goes right here. Um, this is another boy right here. Another boy, G. Um, Ying Zi Ji. I can't pronounce that name, but as you can see, he's 10 years old and has been studying the coding language Python for about six months at a coding at a coding agency. I'm bringing this up to you because what we have to understand is that in this day and age and this new world that we're entering into and that we are honestly already living in, we're no longer competing with people within the United States when it comes to these kind of jobs, this kind of occupation. We're not competing within the United States anymore. The world is global now. We are a global community now, whether you want to believe that or not. You don't have to, that's on you, but I'm telling you the reality of what is. So you're competing with these children. So you have to ask yourself, how does my seven-year-old, three-year-old, eight-year-old, and 10-year-old stack up next to these kids, okay? That's what you gotta ask yourself. That's what I ask myself concerning my seven-year-old son. And one of the things that I do with my seven-year-old son that I wanna introduce to you, and it's completely free. So let's make sure we're utilizing this stuff, those of us who are in position to be able to utilize this. It's free. Let me pull this up for you right now. It is a great resource. Let me go back to the home screen of this website. And it is called, give me just a moment, code.org. Once again, the link to this will be in the description below. I'm begging you to utilize this with your children because this right here is what's gonna help introduce our children into coding. It's a very fun format that they use in order to intro introduce children into coding and to get them started on the right path to be able to compete in the future that's upon us already. So you go to course catalog like I just did, you have grades K through five, grades six through 12, uh, and beyond K through 12. Now, my son is seven years old, so obviously I would go to grades K, th K to five. And right here, you have Pre-Reader Express, um, Express Courses. You have this right here, Course A, Course B. I mean, there, there's all this stuff is for free, okay? All this stuff is free. I'll click on this right here just to give you a quick example, all right? This is Course C. Um, scroll down a little bit. It, we'll, ju we'll just go here, okay? And this is just a quick example of what they got going on over here. You know, I just clicked on that really quickly, but let me get rid of this now. I think I'm getting an echo. 
let me back up out of here. But this is just an example of what they have on this website. And it's all free. It's 100% for free. And on top of this being free and order as it pertains to teaching our children how to code at no cost. When you scroll down a little bit more, let me go back to grades K to five. I really hope we take this stuff seriously and utilize it to the best that we can. You scroll down a little bit more and they give you more courses from third party websites that are completely for free. So let's say you've exercised all of the courses that are on this page here. OK, you've exercised all those courses there and each course comes with a certificate at the end, which is great for motivating your child and giving them confidence in the fact that, hey, I can code too. I can build websites. I can create games. This is such a phenomenal website. But when you come down to the bottom here and you see right here, I believe this is called what? Thinker. You go here on Thinker, hit go. And let's go all to that website. I don't think it pulled it up, but. Give me just a second. Stop sharing and let me go to this right here. OK, and this isn't the only website that it gives you access to. The original code.org website, when you click on these third party websites, you know, it, it gives you a host of them that are for free to help teach your child how to code. Look at this. The number one coding platform for kids. OK. And this is free. It's completely free. Quick tutorial. Get started for free. Click on student. OK, uh, what do you want to do over here? You want to go to Puppy Adventure? We'll just go to Puppy Adventure. OK, Look, a shoe. They put the volume down on that because I don't want any uh, issues. All right. But you see here, uh, look a shoe. You click any way to, to continue. And you just keep clicking along and you see how it brings you to this point to where you come over here and you're connecting the blocks, you hit the play button and the cartoon character moves over. So essentially what you have here is your child is creating cartoons, he's creating video games and it's teaching them how to code in a very fun way, all right? To get them intrigued in this new technology and in these new innovations that are already here and that are to come. This is how you spark their minds and get this stuff going. I would suggest that you participate in this and utilize these websites to the best that you can for at least a minimum with your child 30 minutes a day, if it's possible for you, at least a minimum of 30 minutes a day. Now, let me get this out of here. Let me clear this stuff out. Give me just a moment. And then we're gonna move on to what we can do for our high school uh, brothers and sisters, all right? because there's free tools for them out there as well. Believe that when I tell you. Okay, so now let me go. I believe I am going to read this article that is here called Coding for Kids. Let me pull it up. I didn't pull it up on the screen. Give me just a second. Um, where is it? Okay. OK, here's the article right here. Um, it's called Coding for Kids, Five Things to Know About Google.org Support for Popular Learning, for, for a popular learning platform. And I am going to read some of this off to you. Um, it shouldn't take too long, um, God willing. <laughs> OK, so let me let me get into this really quickly so we can be done. Uh, the way people work is changing and so are the core skills and so are the core skill sets they'll need to succeed in the 21st century. Beyond the nuts and bolts of tech proficiency, employer, employers expect more than half of all jobs to require, to require high degrees of cognitive skills like creativity and logical reasoning and the ability to solve complex problems. Like all learning, the earlier the start, the better the outcomes. But when it comes to developing core, uh, when it comes to developing core competencies and technology, minority students face significant barriers. Only 45% of black students have access to computer science courses compared with 52% of their white counterparts. 
Black, Latinx, and female students have even higher fences to climb. Recently, Google announced support for two programs aimed at helping understand students connect with computer science and hone their coding skills. That includes an extension of Code Next, a free Google program that delivers computer science education to Black and Latinx students in their communities, and three and a three-year, five million dollar investment from Google's excuse me from Google's philanthropic philanthropic arm, Google.org, in the Scratch Foundation's work. Scratch, the world's largest coding community for kids, provides a free open source learning environment that attracted 200 million user interactions this year alone. The platform gives kids from all ages and backgrounds the chance to create coding projects using an accessible, an accessible graphical interface. Scratch builds on STEM and other skills that future employers are looking for in new hires, a common goal for tech, a common goal for tech companies and their philanthropies. And we're almost done with this. The recent grant, <clears throat> excuse me, the recent grant is just the last example of Google.org's ongoing support for Scratch, an important plank in its computer science education giving. Here are five things to know about Google.org. Here are five things to know about why Google.org is throwing some serious funding behind this nonprofit. And then it goes into the list of why they're doing this. But my main reason for reading this off to you is that I want to talk about what's called Code Next. OK, now let me pull that up for you. And then we're going to wrap this thing up. You go to Code Next and then we're going to wrap this up. And I really hope we utilize this information. Um, because this is so critical. This is so critical for us to take advantage of this stuff. It's free. No, from Google, Code Next. Okay, so what should be in front of you right now is Code Next. Let me get this out the way. Okay, so Code Next. Let's scroll down a little bit. Okay, so when you come here, it says, how does Code Next work? It goes into the you know minor details, very quick bullet points of how Code Next works. You scroll down a little bit more. What is Code Next? Okay, now we come to Code Next. Code Next is a free computer science education program that meets Black and Latinx high school students in their own communities and provide the skills and inspiration they need for long for a, for long and rewarding careers in computer science related fields. Between 2011 and 2018, Black students and Hispanic college students each only made up 3% of computer science graduates. Code Next plans to change that. And then it goes into some statistics, right? 91.5% of the most recent 12th grade graduates uh, accepted to and accepted to and attending, excuse me, I'm getting tired from this reading. My apologies. 91.5% of our most recent 12th grade graduate students were accepted to and attending college and or higher education programs. It goes on to say 88.4% 80, of our most recent 12th grade graduates are majoring in a STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math field in college. 58.1% of our most recent 12th grade gra graduates are specifically naming computer science or information systems as their major. Now, there's a lot more you can go through. I recommend you highly to come here for yourself, do your own due diligence and read what they have going on on here. On the left portion right here where you see code next level, they're discussing the um, they're discussing the, uh, the campuses that they have, but obviously the campuses are closed right now because of the current health situation that we're dealing with. But on the right hand side here where you see code next connect, this is their online learning. So it's available to any and everybody regardless of where you are, okay? It doesn't matter as long as you have a functioning computer and some reasonable internet, you can participate in this. All you gotta do is hit the apply button. That's right there in the upper right-hand corner, okay? Once again, this is 100% completely free. 
So for all of those who are in position to be able to take advantage of this kind of stuff and to utilize this, please do. This is for our high school kids right here, okay? For our high school brothers and sisters. So let's please not sleep on this information. Um, let's not take it for granted. Let me pull this off the screen real, qu real quick um, as I close. Let's not take this stuff for granted, brothers and sisters. Like I said, it's free and the world is changing quickly. It's changing very, very quickly. And if we're not adapting to these changes, we're gonna get completely left behind. And that's an understatement. As I've said in previous episodes, we're gonna be the walking dead out here. That's what we're gonna be. How the world looks now in 2021 versus how it's gonna look in 2030 is gonna be two completely different worlds. Whether that changes for better or worse depends on you and not somebody else. Please take that to heart. This information is free. I know not everybody's in position to utilize even this free stuff. Because trust me, I've been there when you're you're just so broke that you can't even afford the most low budget laptop that's $200. You just don't have it. I get it. But for those of you who do have it, let's take advantage of this. And maybe you might not be able to take advantage of this. But you got relatives, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, whatever, who can share this with them so that they can take advantage of it, even though you might not be able to utilize this right now. Now, I don't want to be the dead horse, so that's going to do it for today's episode. But let's get our children prepared for the new world that is to come. And with all that being said, I'm your boy, Tony DeLaramie. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Make sure you follow me on all social media. Those links will be in pinned in the comment section below. Make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text message whenever I release a new video. But it also serves as a protection plan for myself. In case YouTube ever gives this channel the axe, I'll be able to send you a direct link to where you can find me next. And lastly, but certainly not least, for those of you who have been subscribed to this channel for quite some time now, have a love and appreciation for the work that I put in on this channel. The number one way you can show your support to me is through Patreon. For only $3 a month, that will help me put that will help put me in position to take TD Hip Hop Media off of YouTube. Remember, the goal is not to grow big on YouTube, but to grow independent of YouTube. And until the next video, peace.